Political candidates who get elected demanding reform but then take money from those they have been rallying against. We all know what happens. And yet a new report out by Bloomberg shows how some Tea Party candidates have been doing just that. But are they alone? Ben has the reality check you won't see anywhere else. The report out by Bloomberg News points to a serious problem when it comes to the positions of some Tea Party candidates and who they've been accepting money from. The report from Bloomberg took a look at 10 Tea Party-backed freshmen on the House Financial Services Committee, part of a force that won election in a populist backlash to government spending that included emergency lending to major banks and bailout of firms including U.S. automakers. The report states that those 10, though they were against the bailout of the auto industry, have not introduced any legislation about too-big-to-fail banks. Bloomberg claims the messaging of Republican candidates during the campaign cycle of 2009 and 2010 has dissipated. Those same lawmakers are now collecting money from the firms bailed out by President George W. Bush's $700 billion Troubled Asset Relief Program, or TARP. So what are we talking about here? Well, five banks, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, and Goldman Sachs. They held $8.5 trillion in assets at the end of 2011. Combined, those institutions took $150 billion in bailout money in 2008, and they did repay it by the end of the next year. The political action committees of those institutions have now distributed $169,000 a little more than that, through March 31st to the campaign coffers of those 10 freshman Tea Party-backed lawmakers, again, who are on the House Financial Services Committee. The story goes on to talk about each of these 10 Tea Party-backed freshmen, but for the sake of time here, we'll look at one. Stephen Fincher, a congressman from Tennessee. Fincher promised as a candidate to help Main Street and to ensure that there would be no more Wall Street bailouts. It was in an advertisement that ran 98 times in the Nashville market. It was in the run-up to his victory in a district that had previously been held by a Democrat since 1988. And yet, Fincher has received $11,500 from the political action committees run by Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Wells Fargo. Now, what Bloomberg fails to mention in this report is that President Obama has done and does the exact same thing. He has railed against the excesses of Wall Street, but then holds multiple campaign fundraisers with Wall Street executives. Though this year, there is less interest in giving the president money. You see, employees of Goldman Sachs, for instance, in 2008, they gave President Obama over $1 million. It was more than donors from any other private employer in the country. But so far this year, those employees have given him only about 45000 but overall, Wall Street firms have given the president just over $270,000 for his campaign. And those figures do not account for all Wall Street giving, nor do they account for the full force of each candidate's robust network of what are called Wall Street bundlers, wealthy individuals who raise money from friends, family members, and business associates. So here's what you need to know. The problem isn't a Democratic or Republican problem. It is a systemic problem with the way campaigns are run in this country. Influence peddling is alive and well. At the end of the day, politicians may go to Washington to stand for the people, but far too many of them seem to stay in Washington by accepting funds from only a few. And that is Reality Check. If you would like to make your voice heard on the story, you can head over to Ben's Facebook page. Find it by simply searching Ben Swan, W-X-I-X. -X.